Hello, seniors. I know you're anxious to get this last project done for your English class for English 4. We have the Poetry Professor. This will be project three. It will be your final project in English class. And I'm just going to try to give you some helpful hints today on how to accomplish this. And this video will later be posted on the summit announcements. The PowerPoint that's going to guide you through the whole project will be posted there as well. And hopefully Miss Lewis can get on the dashboard of English 4 and get it on Canvas announcements as well so that you can find this and you can know what to do from step to step. Now you do know that I'm right down the hall in room 200. So if you need to, come find me and I will explain it in further detail. But hopefully this PowerPoint gives you all the resources you need to know about the Poetry Professor. So um, the end result is going to be you picking a poem of your choice. There is a list of ones that you can choose from and uh, you will recite the poem in video form. Um, obviously, you can use your cell phone and post a link to that on the final product page. Or there is a wonderful website called Flipgrid, and it's fun to use, and you can you do it right from your web webcam on your Chromebook as well. So it will be easy. You get to use note cards, um, but you will recite the poem, and I'll give you a rubric, but what we are looking for is um, the meanings behind the poems, the tones behind the poems, and things of that sort. So. You need to be prepared, you know, to give a good speech, basically. But there are lots of checkpoints and steps to go before that we get to that area. So I'm going to guide you through with all the resources you need from this PowerPoint. I'm going to take you over there right now. And hopefully you'll understand all of this and be able to see exactly what I'm referring to here. Okay, let me get you over there. Every time I launch my Zoom, I lose it, but here we go. Okay, this is the final product final project instructions. Okay, there are some focus areas that go along with poetry. We have poetic form, genre, poetry, poetic sound. These are additional um, focus areas. I think that's what's called. You have five focus areas that must be completed. You have five additional ones that we're asking you to do. So these are three additional that go along with this unit. So once you complete those five, this is a great timeline. If you wanna to try to get one done by the 31st of March, the poetic form, the genre poetry by April 7th and poetic sound by the 14th. We're asking for this final project to be due April 22nd. That's our goal so that we can spend the last month wrapping up anything that gets kicked back to you and everything that we can get done. So these, this is just a good guideline to go on. So if you have not chosen these as additional focus areas to do, then we'll get started. Okay, so our, uh, what we want to be able to concentrate on is that you will be able to do all the goals of the Poetry Professor Project, and you can apply the twist annotation strategy to poetry, and we'll go over all of that. Now, you may be getting started before the 25th, but this is kind of our kickoff date, and Ms. Lewis will be showing this video to you. Okay, so we have several, when you get on your Summit Project 1 page, there are several activities for you to do. I'm going to Hopefully this will kick you over here. This is checkpoint one for the poetry professor. But if you go to um, just your login and where it says plans and you go in, there is lots of, this is just number one, poetry analysis skills practice round one. There are lots of resources. There's a Mad Libs, there's the Blackberry Picking Twist, Twist Overview. These things are all great. If I had you every day in class, we would do one each class period so that you could see exactly you know, how you write your own poetry with Poetry Mad Libs. In other words, there are blanks in there and you are supposed to fill them in. You've all done a Mad Lib before and you make it really funny. You just do a list of words and then they insert them in a story and it comes out kind of crazy. So then we have like a graphic organizer for the twist analysis. Let me make sure this picked up. I wanna make sure I'm gonna share it over here just real quick, just to make sure it picked up. Okay, so it gives you a um, story that's called Blackberry Picking, or it's a poem, I'm sorry, Blackberry Picking. And then it kind of tells you how to um, take the tone for T, word choice for W, imagery is I, and poetic devices, structure for the S, and theme for the T. So you can analyze any poem using the twist, okay? So that's gonna be our main focus for like checkpoint two and as we move on. So twist poetry analysis is right here. If you want to take a picture with your phone so you can remember what twist stands for, right? But if you go to the Blackberry Picking assignment, that's where we are. Blackberry Picking gets us to the twist poetry analysis. 
tone, word choice, imagery, structure, and theme. So that's what we're going to be concentrating on through the whole unit. All right, so let's get to uh, back to our project. Hopefully, I'm going to make sure this shared. So we will go through these, you know, these activities, and those are wonderful. This is I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by Williams Wordsworth. William Wordsworth. That's a lot of W's. So when you um, read through this, it gives you such wonderful imagery, and you can see what the tone is, and you know, you can analyze it using the twist. So what is the author's tone of this poem? What is his word choice? What is the imagery that he uses? What structure? What theme? So there are several poems to choose from. If you like one that's kind of reminding you of nature and that makes you feel peaceful, maybe you want to uh, hear about the heart with pleasure feeling and you're dancing with the daffodils. So perhaps this poem would might speak to you. You maybe you just want a happy thing in your life right now. So you might want to choose that poem to use for your final, but there are lots of choices. You don't have to pick this one right off. So this kind of goes through tone, word choice, imagery, all of these things that you would use for these devices to analyze the poem you choose. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going into details on there. I think you can kind of look by the structure first to the form. That means like, does it shift? How many stanzas does it have? Does it, you know, have rhyme? Does it have, you know, like a rhythm to it? Is it just a, you know, what type of, of form is it? The theme, of course, is going to be very important because you're going to have to analyze the theme to the poem you choose. That is going to have to be said in that final product. So there's blackberry picking, and that's an activity you can do that helps you to annotate a poem. Okay, it's going to be very important for you to have either old-fashioned highlighters to do this and like print one off. Maybe Miss Lewis can print some of these off, or you will just use your tools on Summit that allow you to do colored highlighting. So I think some of you have already done checkpoint one and two and have seen what I mean by this. But uh, you will make sure that you take everything and look at this. Oh, this is a simile. This is an alliteration. This, you know, uh, briars, what are briars? Maybe I need to figure out what that is. Oh, it's a thorny shrub. So you will write on your poems that you pick to do and you will annotate it. We all know what annotating means. It means taking a highlighter, taking a pen, and noting it, making notes on it about what you're going to say in your final product. Okay, so checkpoint one, let's make it just do coming up pretty quick. Let's get it done. Okay, checkpoint one is not difficult. I'm going to take you right to checkpoint one. Okay, checkpoint one, let's look at, hopefully I don't lose you on this. This is just your analyzing kind of what you're going to do. It's basically your plan. Okay, checkpoint one is your plan. All right, what are you going to do? This is your skills practice. All right, so in your own words, what do you need to do to achieve a six on your structure score? Do you need to have, in your own mind, does your poem need to have a rhyming? You need to figure out the rhyme and the meter. You know, you need to worry about the structure. You need to answer that. What questions do you have about the different level of this skill? You know, what, do, what is your questions on this? Okay, so it's, let me find, get down here. It doesn't want to go for me. My cursor wants to be stuck. Oh, I'm losing my light, y'all. I'm sorry. If I'm in my room by myself, that's what happens. Okay, so checkpoint one, there is a, a poem, and you will have to look at that well. I'm so sorry. Let me get my cursor over here. When you have this smart board TV, it doesn't allow you to you bring your cursor very often. Okay, so it's going to give you when I have fears that I may cease to be by Keats. Okay, so it's going to make you do notes on the structure right here. Okay, so is it, it's, you're going to look at the rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, right? C, 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 or C, D, C, D. So you're going to figure out the rhyme scheme and give it to me over there. Give me the structure. Is there lots of imagery? Is there lots of similes? Just kind of analyze it. Now for checkpoint one, let's only do one poem. So you can choose the mezzo Camin, or you can choose the one up here at the top by Keats. All right, so you choose one. Do step two or step three. You can choose one. So you pick one, okay? So you pick one and get that done. Answer the first two questions and get the other two done for your checkpoint one. Then submit, request feedback, and I'll get that graded for you. Okay, so uh, checkpoint one, 
We, I said March 29th, I think, and then I don't know, maybe I changed it in my mind myself. I don't know, let's, by April 1st, let's say that, I don't know. Okay, so then we had a few activities using funeral blues, and it was just kind of another good poem that you may, a lot of people are choosing this for their poem because it's kind of a somber mode. I don't know, it makes me think of Halloween time. So maybe you might want to read through funeral blues and choose it as your final. That's just another choice for you. Okay, so checkpoint one, fill out the rubric worksheet, answer these two questions. What do you have to do to achieve a perfect score? What questions do you have about the final product? Choose one poem, right, and talk about its structure. Okay, choose one poem, what the structure is about. You can choose the mesocamin or the first one. You do not have to do both of them, submit it. Okay, checkpoint one. Okay, I put that poem up there for you to see as well. Okay, word choice, we're going through these as well. Why does Emily Dickinson say, I heard a fly buzz when I died? Okay, which why is she interrupted by when someone is like seriously dead and it's over, life is over, there's a fly buzzing? You know, what is this supposed to mean? Why does she choose that? So we have several guiding questions here that you can do, but let's look at, this is just kind of things you need to do on your own for practice, just resources you have for practice. Okay, checkpoint two. If we had class time, we would do it all, but I'm trying to just get through all the checkpoints for you to get the main points here. Okay, so checkpoint two, choose your poem. Okay, now how do I get to poem choices? Right here, there's some poem choices. Click on your link, it'll go here. I'll probably lose you on the stop. I'm gonna stop sharing and get you caught back up with me. Hopefully got it here, yes. All right, so this will get you to tons of poems. You can use any of the ones that were in the PowerPoint, or you can choose one of these. You can do America, One Art, Power, Second Coming, choose a poem. Okay, so that's the link. It's also in your resources as well too. Okay, so choose a poem. Now we're gonna do checkpoint two by using a poem. All right, you gotta pick one. You gotta start analyzing it. You gotta start annotating, okay? This is where your, your highlighting comes in. All right, so let's go look and see what checkpoint two looks like. Oops, let me get back over here. All right, so hopefully I'm not losing you on all this switching here. I'll stop here in a minute. Let's go to poetry prep work. All right, we're gonna select a poem to analyze it and we're gonna annotate it. So in poetry prep work, you are going to pick a poem. You need to tell me which poem are you doing? So type it out here. You're allowed to type on this. This is your notebook. All right, and you're into, Pick your poem and then your interpretation of the poem's meaning. All right, so what I would do is copy and paste my poem on here, highlight it, put a couple of notes about it, and choose three of the techniques of their word choice and structure. As this person used alliteration, as this person um, used like foreshadowing that you know something bad's getting ready to happen, you know, what is there onomatopoeia? Is there a lot of like buzz in Emily Dickinson's fly, you know, buzzing? So you must give me the poem highlight it up and give me three, uh, I guess, figurative language tools that you see used in the poem. That is checkpoint two, request for feedback. Choose your poem, get it written on here, highlighted, annotated, and then give requests for feedback. Find some figurative language that's being used in there. Okay, that's checkpoint two, due April 9th. Checkpoint three is due April 15th. For checkpoint three, now you're gonna sum up your poem, okay? You've analyzed it, you've highlighted it, you've looked at everything the author has done to create this poem. Now you've got to take the meaningful parts that you found in checkpoint two and write a few paragraphs explaining the point the poet was trying to make. Make sure it's in your own words, all right? We are not copying word for word the poem again, all right? We did that in checkpoint two. This is your analysis of the poem. If you're confused on exactly what the tone is from the poem, maybe you picked a hard one, come to me or Miss Doring next door and she will explain it to you a little bit better. Okay, and we can then you will go back. So for checkpoint three, let's go back to your, I'm on your, your view here, student view. Written explication draft. Okay, go to that, checkpoint three. Write out one to two pages single space. One will be great. Begin your draft, just writing here. Explain your poem. Again, put the title of your poem and tell me what your poem was about in your own words. I mean, half a page to a page. What, what was your poem about? Can we do that? We can do that, yes. 
Okay, checkpoint four. See me for some note cards. I've got a big stack of note cards here. Several people have already come to me. So see me for some note cards. All right, you're going to take that that you just wrote up, right? Your explanation of your poem. You're going to, you know, make some notes on that. You're going to be prepared to present a speech, okay? You are gonna be great on eye contact and how you, well you speak and correct grammar. And so you wanna do your best. So we don't wanna write word for word for word for word for word what we're gonna do on our poem on this, but we wanna just have good collected notes. So that when we're talking, we could say, I hear a buzz like a fly by Emily Dickinson. And I'm gonna look down, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna say next, but I'm not gonna read directly from this and do this the whole time, right? So checkpoint four, come show me your note cards. Once I see your note cards, I'll click you on through checkpoint four. Is that easy enough? Very easy. Okay, so now let's see what we've got. We've got note cards, so you're time to prepare. So come on down for, yes, okay, sorry, let me get that right here. Come on down to see me. Oops, you gotta do your best. I'll give you some note cards. You'll get ready for the actual filming. Okay, final product. I'm sorry, this is a little harder to see. Maybe I'll make this bigger. I don't know why this one didn't turn out quite. After you've become an expert on your poem, it's gonna be your job to take that knowledge and share it with us, okay? You're gonna read, you're gonna tell the title of the poem, the author of the poem, and then you're gonna recite the poem. You can read the poem, read it off, and then you are going to tell me what you learned from that. What does it mean? What, what's the theme of it? What's the tone? Do the twist, you know? Why did they choose these word choices? Okay, you must, this is what you're being graded on. You must use proper eye contact, have good volume, good inflection, like your words tell the story and make us want to listen, and emphasis, right? Emphasize the certain parts that need to be emphasized. You should um, use hand gestures. I mean, that's just a natural thing for me. They emphasize your certain points, okay? So how do we submit the final project, okay? Now, I feel like most are gonna find it easiest to probably video have someone in your house, video you, set it up for video, you video to yourself a million times. I've seen your Snapchats, I know. So get a parent's phone if you don't have one and submit it on the checkpoint four worksheet so that we can have that. But also you have the option to use Flipgrid. Okay, so if you don't wanna use a cell phone or your camera's messed up and you can't use a cell phone, no problem. We're gonna use your Chromebook. Okay, so the next slide has a Flipgrid link. If you have a, a telephone, you can pull it up on your phone and work with it as well too. So you can still use your phone to submit on Flipgrid. Either way works good. So you can use the QR code reader or you can just go, this will join you into our class, okay? The Flipgrid Senior Final Project page. So you're gonna join the Final Product Poetry presentation on Flipgrid. And I included my cell phone number here. So if you want to um, video yourself and send it to my cell phone, if you can't figure out how to put the link on here, that'll work as well too. Um, I don't care. We'll, be, we'll get it done one way or the other. This is getting done. Okay, so go to Flipgrid. And you will find the link here. I'm gonna stop sharing, so I make sure that it pulls up for you. I want you to be able for sure to see it. Okay, when you get to Flipgrid, that link should bring you to our class, okay? So of course I've already logged in, so you're gonna to have to go to like a login page. It's gonna ask you to log in through Google. You got to log in with your Tulsa schools, Google, Gmail, Google Mail, whatever it is, Gmail because it's only gonna allow anyone in our class or in our school to come to this website, okay? Oops, I'm losing my light again. Okay, so it's gonna come up where you're going to record a response. It says, please record your poem recitation, recite your poem and then tell what the poem means to you. In other words, explain it to me. Okay, so you're gonna record a response. You just hit record and it's gonna give you 10 minutes. Now, I'm not pretty sure most of you are not going to you have to hit allow that you're gonna, the camera's not working now because I'm using my Zoom. But when you get yours, it's just gonna be, you're just gonna hit allow. It's gonna give you 10 minutes. Oh, it's pretty cool. You can actually do graphics and do like little special effects. So I know some of you that like that kind of thing, media can make special effects on your poem presentation. And so then you just submit it and it's, it gives you up to 10 minutes to do your work. So it's totally fine. So then once it's submitted, we'll be able to see your response down below. So I'll be able to check it and grade it. So right now, zero responses, right? Okay, so that is your final product. Can we make it work? Can we make it happen? Let me get back over here to this one more time. Okay, so really quick sum up. 
really quick sum up. Uh, checkpoint one is going to be kind of using the twist, the anagram twist to like analyze, you know, a poem that's on there. Choose one poem and analyze it. Checkpoint two, you're going to pick a poem, type it up for me or copy and paste it and annotate it. Checkpoint three, you're going to write one page about your poem, what it means. Checkpoint four, you're going to come get note cards and you're going to get ready, your speech all ready. And check the final product is filming your poem. Now, lots of resources back up here at the beginning you can go through and look at. Uh, I think there's three poems on here you can choose from, and then you get to that link and can choose from about 10 poems. If you find a poem that is not on here, come sh at show me first and like get prior approval. I just want to make sure it's just a school appropriate po a poem, okay? But um, I hope you don't have any questions. Now, the layout, the way we're going to work this, Miss Lewis and I have decided that you're going to work on this project one hour a day. Okay, work on this project one hour a day. The second hour, we're going to go back to MLA and Socrates, and you're going to Socratic seminar, seminar, I can't talk, Socratic seminar, and finish those. Go directly to the final projects on those two and get those completed so that I can grade them. One thing is it doesn't alert me that you have completed those. So stop by my room in 200 or my emails on this PowerPoint, email me and say, hey, I did get that done. Will you please go back and change my score because it's already been scored a zero. So we have to go in and change that. All right, any questions at all, come down the hall, room 200. And hopefully guys, this will help get you going. Look for this uh, video and everything on your summit page and hopefully your Canvas page before it's all said and done, okay? Thank you, let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.